예, 다음 시간입니다. 머크라는 기업 잘 아시는 분도 있을 테고, 어, 모르시는 분도 있으실 텐데, 오늘 좀, 어, 그, 스마트 제조와 관련된 얘기를 좀할 겁니다. 외국 분이신데, 저희 통역해 주시는 분이 옆에 있으니까, 순차로 좀, 어, 얘기를 할 겁니다. 어, 안녕하십니까? 안녕하세요. 오늘 뭐 와서, 어, 세미콘 행사에서 어떤 발표를 하셨다고 했는데 어떤 주제로 발표를 하셨는지 좀 궁금합니다. So, uh, I am from the company Merck uh, from uh, Germany and I am responsible from the operations of digital solutions in our company uh, especially in the electronics business of Merck I am responsible from the leveraging the data in our businesses which is our materials business And my presentation was mainly about how do we use our own data to collaborate with our customers and suppliers to mitigate the risk in quality, supply chain, and also to improve our sustainability carbon footprint. 보통 머크에 계신 분들이라고 하면 대부분 다 화학 전공이신 걸로 알고 있는데 그 그쪽 전공은 아니신 거죠? So I am chemical engineer with PhD degree as well. Oh. But uh, I have been working on uh, data analytics, database process modeling over 10 years. So my major is chemical engineering. 지금 머크 안에서 그 디지털 어, 솔루션 비즈니스 유닛이라고 했는데 이게 뭐 하는 조직입니까? As you may know, uh, we are known with the chemistry and the chemicals that we provide in semiconductor industry in different uh, areas. And digital solutions is a complementary business to our Uh, materials business unit. So we actually uh, use our data across our manufacturing sites during the chemical manufacturing. We use our data from R&D and also supply chain to, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, to mitigate the risk in quality and also to be more efficient internally and of, of course to help also our customers to optimize their yields. So actually it's a kind of complementary business to the materials And it's a good combination because feature is uh, really difficult without having good data and data analytics skills, even though you are uh, working in a chemical company. That's, uh, that's a nice question. Actually, we are um, pretty new. Uh, in 2021, we established the digital solutions unit, but the workflows and the methods that we have developed, especially in uh, data analytics area, we have been using that since 2018 within the company across different business fields. The unit is not a business of money, but it's not a business of the company. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, the director of the company has a good opinion of the company. So let me explain this uh, with three key uh, value propositions that we have for us internally and of course for our customers. The first value proposition is the quality excursions. If there is a quality excursion within the integrated circuit manufacturing, solving that quality excursion currently takes six to eight weeks or maybe even I have been in use cases like six to eight months. It could take years. With digital solutions, by using data analytics, we have proven that solving this kind of quality issues takes maximum a couple of weeks or days. So this is a huge time. Time means money for both sides. The second thing is that understanding what parameters influences the performance of the customer and also us helps us to optimize our yield. And we know that Yield improvement is very important also for this industry. We also track that. The third one is, which is very important for our feature, learning from the existing use cases which are running in PO, like process of records, currently available materials and technology nodes, using those learnings in R&D to innovate faster in material ramp up for new technology nodes. Mm -hmm. And of course, We have proven that we could reduce the time to innovate material by 50% in different business fields 
So being faster in R&D is also directly related to improving efficiency and, of course, um, improving the yield whenever the material is at the manufacturing uh, site. This is the perfect description of how we actually uh, initiated this organization and established. But of course, this is not the proactive way. We don't want quality excursions and issues happening for any of our customers. Our goal is to minimize them and to some point to have zero defects. Mm -hmm. And for that, we develop proactively with our customers a data sharing environment where we actually identify the variations upfront before we even send the materials to customers, how we can mitigate that. So this is where we are moving now within mm -hmm. the organization with our leading edge customers. 데이터를 공유한다라는 것은 머크의 데이터를 고객에게 공유한다라는 겁니까? 아니면 고객 데이터도 일로 공유하고 이쪽 데이터도 저로 공유한다라는 얘기입니까? So it's it's both way. Uh. Currently, when we provide a material to our customers, we provide them so-called certificate of analysis, which explains the quality of our material. But what we are doing right now, we are sharing beyond certificate of analysis the data from our raw materials quality, from process and in process quality. And of course, we request our customers to share the, their data in a normalized and a censored way. That means no one knows what are those parameters. They are just A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. They are varying between zero and one. Mm -hmm. But once we conduct correlations and find out some parameters are correlating with customer's data, then we bring our subject matter experts under NDA, understand the physical reasoning behind that correlation to solve the feature quality excursions or even improve the yield. Mm. This is both way, um, I will say, two-way data collaboration. We have started this journey in 2018 and uh, we established workflows to, to implement this in multiple use cases. In that sense, what we hear from the industry during this kind of forums, that it is something unique, because it's not only about bringing data on the table. There are platforms that you can share data across the value chain. Mm. But what is actually uh, unique for us that I could say, we have been investing quite a bit last years to digitize our manufacturing plants. Mm. Just some numbers. We have 150,000 batches that we digitize their data. We have 9 billion data entries in the platform. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, brings us a unique uh, position when we would like to scale our solutions for the industry. The and there is actually a very exciting use case which started in Korea here. <laughs> so in 2018, I was involved in a quality excursion uh, with a leading edge customer that uh, there was defectivity issue and we couldn't understand over a year what was the root cause of the issue. And in 2019, I traveled here together with the subject matter experts from quality, engineering and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We sat together, we checked. There are 2,400 roundabout parameters mm -hmm. that may impact the customer's defectivity. And the question one, which one is the root cause? 
So we conducted some data analytics workflows. We narrowed down the parameters to 22 within a couple of days. And then we checked in detail, because we have chemical engineering and process engineering knowledge, we checked what could be the reason that those parameters are influencing the defectivity. Mm -hmm. And with that, actually, we solved the quality excursion within six weeks, which hasn't been solved over a year. And this was a great example of how we used the customer's defectivity data with our data to narrow down very easily to the root cause that might come from the material's performance. I know it's typical to say very good question. This is a really very good question. So let me explain in a very simplified way. In, in manufacturing, we have different unit operations that is actually contributing to the materials quality because you start synthesizing that and then purification. So we mapped out the process. It's like cooking pasta. We started the cooking the pasta by adding raw materials. Then we filtered the pasta. We got the water out. Then we formulated our sauce. We understood that one of these operations was a little bit deviating from the standard. And data could help us to understand what was the reason that it was deviating. And um, it was mainly for a certain part of the process that we had to actually be more proactive to understand that with the data. And then we could solve that. So it was a physical unit operation that was causing. let me start with the first one. Yeah, with the acquisitions, we have uh, different uh, like heterogeneous technologies in, in the manufacturing sites. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, M Chemicals. We are very proud of that acquisition. I landed, I am based in the US and I landed to Korea on Monday. And actually Tuesday, yesterday, I was visiting M Chemical site. Uh -huh. So um, coming back to the question, how do we actually ensure, we have 23 sites across the world and we established our teams, especially digital solutions. Um, our team members are close to the sites. So we have in Taiwan, Japan, Korea, US and Europe, our team members. There are three things that we pay attention to. The first one is IT, OT infrastructure, which is very important. And our teams are trained to check the digital maturity level of a site within a couple of days, like mm -hmm. we did yesterday for M Chemicals. The second thing is that understanding what ERP systems, process control systems, mm -hmm. and also LIMS system, for example, laboratory information management systems they have. Once we understand this, we have data engineers. They automate the data. That means they get that data to the data lake, to the platform where we have fair data. That means uh, data is findable, accessible, um, interoperable and reusable. So we have data automation team bringing the data to the platform, data analytics team, they conduct data analytics. And of course, we have also use case management, project management team, they manage these data collaborations with externals and also with internals. Mm -hmm. This is the system that we developed since we launched the organization. Uh, 시스템을 바꾸고 뭘 새로운 어, 프로세스를 도입하고 하는 거에 대한 반발이나 이런 것들도 좀 있을 것 같은데 앞으로 좀 남은 과제나 이런 것들 뭐가 있는지 좀 궁금합니다. So 
the key thing is in change management, especially in digital space, is understanding the people's needs and being able to communicate with their language. That means if they are in operations or in R&D, you should have a little bit understanding of their domain expertise, mm. little bit understanding of their problems, and good understanding of how digital and data capabilities mm. can solve their problems to make them more efficient. Everything starts with people. Mm. Once you can connect to those individuals and explain them that we are there to help to be more efficient, people is the first thing. We need to use the right technology. That's the second thing. And the third thing is that together with domain expertise and data science methods, we can improve the performance. And once you show this triangle, I think the change happens naturally, but it's all about people. It starts with people. That's a very good question. Even more, how we see in the future, the other thing is that the web works with consulting software and other things are not going to be So uh, there are already some uh, platforms where you can use kind of data sharing capabilities and data analytics, which is actually built for ecosystem. Um, that is something not what you are actually referring to. It's not more direct to, to consulting. But the key thing here is we are talking about our own processes, our own materials and their performance parameters, which is pretty connected to the IP uh, situation. That means intellectual uh, property, how we can actually control that while we are consulting the other companies. Mm. That's the difficult piece. What I believe there could be a company who provides this service, uh, but that should be somewhere in the third party and, and working for the industry not from a company for the others. I believe this answer your question. 오늘 어 나와 주셔서 고맙습니다. 감사합니다.